Let's see how the break treats him in this match. Plays the second ball break, and that corner pocket has just been devouring the cue ball for these last two matches. <laughs> Gives Tim, Tim Darden here ball in hand in the kitchen to start things off. Not many options uh, shooting into the kitchen, but uh, he decides to take the one solid that's sitting there. His solids aren't too bad, really. They're all sort of sitting in the middle of the table apart from the two ball at the bottom. But the two, there is access to the two. It's maybe just getting away from it. Ooh, and he actually decides to slide through instead of trying to draw back into the middle of the cluster or cinch the cue ball, I was thinking, was what he would do to uh, to shoot the seven on the opposite side. But I don't think it's too bad, though, because if he stops the, the cue ball point in the five, he's on the two, and then he can get to the three. And then he's essentially out. Yeah, if you get ideal on either the six or the seven, by the time you are uh, almost ready to shoot the eight, it should be very workable. I think he's missed a trick here, not stopping the cue ball to take the two. Because now he's got to come down for it, and that makes things a lot harder. Whereas if he had stopped the cue ball, he would have just floated off the bottom cushion through the gap and get himself onto the ball he's just played. But this is what so I find so fascinating about eight ball ball it's that pattern it's that the puzzle can you make the puzzle and, and work out how to make the game easier for yourself almost played a tremendous shot right there but just comes up short and now we get to see Shane Thompson do his thing just so beautiful the way he slowly draws back the cue and, and just perfectly straight glides the cue along his chin straight through the shot see a different style at table for Shane. He's uh, a little bit more methodical. He's certainly not a slow player, but just trying to get himself in line and make sure it's right. But he knows he's in perfect shape here to get out. I might even be tempted to just shoot the 13 now, knowing that the 11's not going to move very much. But uh, if you can judge that secondary contact really well, then or even get in a better spot, then it might be ideal to shoot them one after the other. And he did get perfectly straight in here. Wow. He really does just have that beautiful touch. You know, he's, he backs his cue ball when he needs to land, you know, absolutely on the spot. And he invariably does. I thought yesterday in the shootout he was playing incredibly well. And it, I felt that one stage that he might be the player to beat once we'd seen everyone play. He's playing a really high level. You know who I thought was the player to beat until the very end of it was Tyler Steyer. Yeah, he looked good, didn't he? Well, Tim Darden, after missing his first opportunity, has the break here in rack two. Cue ball following forward through the break, but ends up with a nice spread, makes the two ball in the bottom left corner. And it is another very good layout forward. My first instinct here was solids, but actually stripes aren't bad as well. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. The stripes are really nice, especially because of where the 15 ball is sitting in relationship to the 12. So you could really kind of pick your poison after the first shot of what you're going to do next because, like he's ended up here, slightly overdrawing the ball, leaves himself nice for the 12, uses the 12 to get back to the 13, and then can use the 13 to get back up table. He actually over cinched the cue ball there again, and now he's going to have to move the cue ball more than would be desired, I would think. And you can see him taking a little bit of extra time to address the shot. And plays towards the nine ball instead. Has a similar feel to the opening chance that he had. It was that sort of one ball that he left down the table mm -hmm. and couldn't get then good on it and comes back to cost him. Yeah, he had two opportunities in the first two opening shots to take care of that 13 ball. And now... He's going to have to come up with a way to get back down there. Needs a good angle, and he then needs to 
control the pace really well. And now on the 10 ball being quite straight, actually at a spot where he can cheat the pocket a bit and follow forward two rails and probably land fairly ideal on the 13 ball. He's going to have to come with a good stroke, though. Cheats the pocket nicely. Look at the speed on the cue ball. Does he make it past the eight? I, I think he came up short here, Simon. Yeah, it's a great effort, but that that's the kind of highlights the, the problem, isn't it? If you get the kind of pattern slightly wrong, then you have to come up with the big shots, and that's where you sometimes you can't quite get there. It was good effort, though. Goes for the soft kick here. Cue ball on the short well, short rail well, near the short rail, I should say. But uh, looks like Simon will just have a slightly tougher opener and then we'll be off to the races. And he does find the pocket. Three ball definitely in play over that side pocket. Nothing really lays incredibly difficult. Nice little nudge on the four ball there. Yeah, these are the sort of layouts you just don't expect a player, any professional player really, to make any mistakes with. Just got to mind your work. Notice what he did right there. It's, it can be so tempting sometimes to, to try to play sh position on a ball that's close to the ball that you're currently shooting, but instead he he goes away from the four ball because he knows he can use that four ball sitting in that spot to, to come back down the table towards the seven and the eight. And that's kind of what we mean when we talk about pattern play, when you can see that kind of uh, advantageous way of shooting the ball ahead of time. Finally, oh, rare for Shane, got the cue ball all wrong a couple of shots ago, which means he's had to throw it around a little bit more. But he's still going to end up nicely on the eight ball. Who bobbles the eight? Oh my goodness, I actually... I mean, that's quite, quite wide on replay, uh, isn't it? I can't, yeah, watching the replay, I, I'm actually shocked that ball fell. Now, of the top pros out of the UK, do most of them play this second ball break that, that it looks like Shane has been playing here? or There are some that do. There's some that will mix it up. Uh, Shane actually doesn't use it that often. I see. Um, I don't know why. He's, he's obviously come here and he's out that it's the right break for him um, more often than not he's a uh, very much straight down the middle and, and bring the cue ball back up the middle of the table yeah we could see how well that worked out for Chris in the last match yeah once again though Tim with the first chance and once again it's a really good one tricky opener which he deals with Ball does pass this three, no problem, which should have him lay nicely on the 12. Now, the thing that I've noticed though, when he has gotten out of line, is usually or has been due to over hitting a ball. So, trying to cinch the cue ball uses the seven to stop it, but misses the most important part of the shot and misses the 10 ball. Yeah, missed it by quite a way. All his attention on the cannon, which he got right. He's missed earlier in the visit this time. So it's a, a little bit more traffic for Shane, but it's a pretty decent layout here for him anyway. I got to believe he was attacking the three ball there, came up a bit short. He was just taking a quick little look at the four to see if he's going to deal with it now or later, but he's decided on the three ball that it, it would be tough to readdress in the future. <laughs> Not the best of nudges on the one. This is the best thing about eight ball, though. You got options. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Time to recover. I should say it's the best and the worst thing, right? Because sometimes having all those options can get you in trouble. Yeah, I guess when you're playing the rotation games, you kind of you know what you got to do. Yeah, it tells you. Yeah, rotation is, in my opinion, one of the most fun games to play. But at the same time, 
it's one of the simplest once you really understand the game because once the balls are broken, the whole rack is pretty much spelled out where in eight ball there's a lot more nuance. It's the puzzle. Yeah. I, I really love the puzzle of that eight ball. Made a couple of really nice recovery shots there and things are laying pretty for Shane. Simple enough, eight ball for that 3-0 lead. That's the nature of the game, depending on how the ball is spread apart. Sometimes those opportunities can just disappear, barely missing the scratch there in the side on the break. Nine ball does find a hole, and the two ball dresses up nicely here with all the solids kind of sitting in front of pockets. For the fourth time in the match, it feels like he's got a good chance here. First shot's a big one in this one. If you get into a, a premium spot on the table, the rack should play itself. Coming up just a little bit shy of that, in my opinion, but not the worst thing in the world. Because he did leave himself a shot on this four ball. Pretty much ideal at this point. Uh, you can go either way, shoot the six or the one first, but you want to take care of both of them while you're close to this rail and then try to get back to a spot where you can use these uh, these balls near the side pocket. He may save the six for the last shot. Now with traffic being there, there things can go awry. just feels like the three doesn't really fit the pattern, though. Still workable from here, but it feels like you're going to have to make two really good shots at least to get out here. Trying to slice the paint off of this five ball. Makes it. Needs a little bit of fortune. Got a tiny nudge off the 14 ball and things... He's still got a shot. <laughs> But can he manufacture something with the three ball? No. He, he, the very common mistake of trying to move the cue ball more than the shot would allow and overcuts the six ball, leaving Shane again with an open table. Yeah, at this rate, he's just really making the game fairly simple for Shane. This mm -hmm. is well, the only time that he's had to come to the table with any sort of traffic was the previous rack and this time it's once again it's wide open for him I would think the answer here is to just stop the ball here deal with the 12 ball swing the cue ball around for the 14 or the 10 you think he plays two rails around the 10, between the 10 and 8 here? Well, he answered your question, and he's played it beautifully. Yeah, it laid pretty good. Played the 10 nice and thick into the pocket to slow the cue ball down. And in no time at all, sorts that one out. Shane Thompson, 4-0. But it is going to be right down the middle, going for the head ball. Breaking with a similar bridge length from the from the rail as Chris was breaking with. He kind of lost the cue ball there, put, maybe hit the cue ball a little bit low. Got a few kisses and doesn't make a ball again. Yeah, and you'd say, talking about the, the bridge length there on the break, that's probably a little bit further down than the majority of players that have played on the, the TV table mm -hmm. this weekend. Majority a lot closer to the top. Man, that first little rub on the six ball made that shot turn out a little complicated here. Unless he's straight in on the 13 and the five's not in the way.
yeah, a little bit fortunate there to come up with a shot. And he does uh, get into a decent spot here with a decent shot on the 11 ball. Going to have to manage the cue ball nicely, though, to fall into a good zone here. Did he find the 14? Mm, not sure. I don't know. Reaction tells us absolutely not. And now all of a sudden, even though he does have an opening, or sorry, a recovery shot that you might call it, uh, going to have to come with something pretty special here to get back in this rack. Tries to go back and forth. Comes up short again. I don't know about you, Simon, but sometimes when I get into these positions and it feels like things aren't going my way, it might just be time to to fire at something. Maybe try to play the stiff bank on the 15 ball just to kind of get some momentum rolling for yourself, unless you can see the 14 ball. Well, you might as well because there's no great safety options on here. And you're going to be second favorite if you get yourself into a safety battle as well. Although he has played an excellent shot. Yeah. And that was brilliant. Wow, look at the tap on the table from... Shane Thompson. Beautiful, I mean, perfect cue ball speed. Leaves almost nothing but a little look at this two ball. <laughs> and he plays it perfect. Almost the perfect safety and still not enough. That's why you're saying you might as well fire at something. Even right. It's super low percentage. Right. And not even just for, like, trying to win the game, but just trying to get some type of, you know, if things, if you do find the jackpot, so to speak, on the low percentage shot, sometimes it can give you the spirits just to, you know, make things happen for the rest of the rack. But Man, he's got a nice touch. Just plays into the perfect zone where... I mean, he's he could have shot any of the three balls right there and still been okay. All too simple for him. Shane Thompson, 5-0. Yeah, the irony here, Tim Darden has been getting the best results on the break. Just hasn't been able to uh, convert any of his good looks. And again, the 14 ball going straight at the corner pocket. Cue ball a little bit tied up here after this break, but still a couple of options, though they may be a little difficult. Okay, this frozen hit. One of the slight differences that in the rule set that we probably should explain, International April rules we're playing. and. You have to play away. If he moves the 13 here, he'll be a foul. That is interesting. But I understand. Makes sense. Takes out the gray area. First time I think that Shane's been to the table with a, an open table in the match. Looks like he's opening up with a combo here. Plays it nice. Five ball tied up in the middle of the ball, or sorry, the uh, middle of the stack. That's the area that we call sometimes the uh, where the rack breaks open and the most balls lay on the table. Five ball tied up in there. Just wonder if it goes in the side and he'll happily play it. He's a player that will always back his touch to try and land and rather than move things. Sure. Maybe use the two to get there. Get some kind of look at it. Using the six, you'd have to get really straight, and the two covers the pocket that you'd be shooting the, the six into. 
Pankhurst just decided to go into it this time. I think he would have liked to have been a touch straighter on that so he could just come down the right-hand side, but had too much angle, and now he's in trouble. I think the swerve is makeable if, if you can't make it straight on. It's not ideal, but... It, he decides to go after a carom. I wonder if he was, I mean, because if he makes that, he's on nothing. So maybe he was just trying to avoid it and leave it awkward. Pretty good containing shot there from uh, from Tim. Not trying to force too much out of the table. Can he see a window between the 15 and, and 13? At the two ball and he decides to go after the pack. Yeah, well it wasn't much of a window was it, but he, he was right on it. Hasn't really worked out for Shane Thompson, though. You can come with the hero shot here. Cut the six ball down the rail. Yeah, go one rail into the five ball and 12. It's going to stop the cue ball, and the five will drift towards the uh, the bottom left as we're looking at it here. Oh, he gets it, but not the result. The cue ball didn't stop uh, as one would have hoped. It's almost like he cut both of the balls instead of hitting either one really thick. Let's the cue ball slide right through. Wow, I did not even think that that ball was cuttable. And he's going to have a look at the eight ball too. How do you go through all those balls without touching one? I was actually just about to say, I would think in that spot, you just try to cut the five towards the corner and just hope it hovers over the corner, limiting your opponent's options and giving yourself options in case they make a mistake. But instead, he just cuts the paint off of it and puts it right in the hole. And no mistakes with the eight ball. That was a serious out from where he was. With the ball finding the pocket, 10 ball was wired towards the corner. Another stripe finds the same corner pocket, one ball in the side. And a real nice spread of the balls here. I'm not quite sure if the 12 is playable. It looks tied up, but sometimes the cameras can fool you. He took a little look at it there to see if it is playable without hitting the five ball first. And if it is, I would think that you'd open with a combo here on the stripes. He did have an angle to attack the, the 12 straight away if he wanted to, so I think that tells us there is room. Almost overrunning the cue ball, but ends up perfect. I mean, you pick your poison now exactly with where you want to lay the cue ball for a shot on the 12 to maybe give it a little twist and throw it towards the pocket. Plays the 14 first. Interesting, using the 12 ball as a key ball. Going to have to find, I would think, a narrow window for ideal, um, an ideal potting angle on the 12, unless it has just way more room than it appears yeah, on the monitor. It's a good last ball if there's loads of room there. So, oh, he's not happy with that, though. He's not going to be able to get there. Certainly not nicely. You can see him stepping back quite a bit from the table, taking a couple of sighs of frustration with where he's ended up here. But with the couple of thin cuts that we've seen him play, you got to think he's a favorite to make this ball, but the question is, where's the cue ball land? Because it's going to be moving. Plays the bank to slow the cue ball down, try to get some more control of it. 
misses the 12 with a nudge. Is this ball pocketable from here? Oh, his reaction tells us not. The, the room to be on it then must have been quite small. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised he didn't attack it earlier if it's that bad and that tight. But what's he got for us? He's going after it. Oh, it was fine. Yeah. He just fooled us. He was okay. On it all the time. Yeah, and simple enough eight ball to complete the job. And it is match over. Shane Thompson moves on. Tim Darden had his chances, but was not able to take them, especially early on when he had the, the first chances a few times and some good ones. And Shane was in pretty good mode out there, mopping up everything that came his way. Brilliant stuff from Shane. And he will move on to the next stage tomorrow.